sorry. How y'all doing? So let's talk about social media image and post sizes. I know if you're like me, I can get a little frustrated sometimes when I'm trying to make a new post and I forget, okay, what is the optimal Instagram portrait image size or what is the image size required to change my Facebook profile pic? Well, I've created a file in Affinity Designer that I'm going to show you how to make that has all of the templates you'll need for all of your different social media, be it for a post, for uh, the cover photo, for the profile pic. And you can just open that file, uh, click on the artboard that you want, and then uh, create your post or your image or whatever, and then just export just that area in a file, in a PNG, JPEG, whatever you want, that you can just upload to that social media. And you won't have to, you know, keep trying to remember or looking up what the image size requirements are for that post. If you look at this Affinity Designer file I've created, it consists of a bunch of artboards. And if you're not familiar with artboards, those are like files within a file. So if I was to click on this artboard, Instagram portrait, you'll see it highlights over here, Instagram portrait artboard. Uh, this is this is its own little file. So if I was going to make a new Instagram portrait size post, which is 1080 by 1350, I could click on that, you know, zoom in if I want to work on it. Uh, and let's just say I grabbed a image and dropped it on there, whatever it might be, and put my text in, all my borders, everything that I wanted to do to create this post, and then I was ready to export it. I could then go up here to File Export, change this here from Whole Document to Instagram Portrait. Where is it? Um, there it is. And now it will only export anything that is on this artboard. And when I say, when I choose my file type and choose export, it, it will save just that ready to be uploaded to Instagram in the correct portrait format. Now, let's start fresh and show you how to create this with all the correct settings. Uh, no matter where you are, let's get Affinity Designer opened and go to File New. The first thing you want to do is click Create Artboard. Now, it's best to set it to web for the type because that will set your DPI to 72 if this is for stuff that you're posting online. Anything above 72 is just a waste of space. The files are going to be uh, unnecessarily large. So choose that. The sizes and everything don't matter because we're going to change that to suit our needs. And hit OK. Just make sure you click Create Artboard. Hit OK. And it starts you off with one artboard. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to put that over here because I'm going to make a bunch more. What you want to do is go up to the top right to this artboard tool and pull out an artboard. The size doesn't matter for every single type of post that you want to make. So, you know, make a list that you want. Uh, do you typically post to Instagram with the portrait style, the storyboard style? Uh, the square or all of them if so pull out one for as many as you do your Instagram profile pic your Facebook profile pic and if you check the description in the video I'll have a I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a link or just leave a leave a document but there'll be a link to something that has all of the uh, optimal image requirements size requirements for all of the major social media accounts and then for every one of those click drag out an artboard and then go to the first one, go over here where it highlights, click on this name and change it to the name of what you want this one to be. Let's make this my Facebook square post. And I know that the Facebook square requirements are 1200 by 1200. So what you want to do next is come down here to the transform panel. Uh, it may be shortened to just like XFRM, something like that, or you may not see it at all. If you don't, go up here to View, Studio, and make sure that Transform is checked. If it is checked and you don't see it, you might want to look like up here in these tabs or even up here in these. It may be somewhere else, but typically it's going to be down here. And just make sure that this is checked and uh, it'll show up. Click on it. Let's see, I clicked off. So click back onto your artboard that we just named Facebook Square. And then being that it was already set up in the new document panel at 1200 by 1200, I actually don't have to change this one, but that may not have been what it was set up when you created a new document. So just make sure that this width and height says 1200. And then your Facebook Square artboard is ready to go. You can go over here and click on it and zoom into it. 
work on it, add images, borders, text, everything you want to add. And when you're finished, just go to file export. Uh, it, it may already say Facebook square here, but as I showed you a second ago, it might say like whole document and you'll have to open this and pick the Facebook square artboard and then export it. And everything and only everything that is on that artboard will export to a file for you to upload to your social media. So let's just go on to the next one. We'll just do a couple of these so you can kind of get the hang of it. So I'll click on this one. Let's make that my Instagram portrait. And I know that that is 1080 by 1350. So I can hit return. It's named it. Go down here to the transform panel and type in 1080. What is up with my fingers? Let's start over. 1080 by 1350 and now I've got an Instagram portrait artboard at the correct size ready to go that will never change unless you come down here and change it but just don't do that uh, and then I can work on that one go to file export export just that and I'm, I've got a perfectly sized file ready to upload to Instagram in portrait form and we can do another one we'll make this one my YouTube channel banner now a YouTube banner is 2560 by 1440 so I'll go down here to 2560 by 1440 and now I've got a perfectly sized YouTube channel banner now you can go to the select tool and you can move these around because some of them are going to get a little bigger they're going to want to overlap stuff so you know once you start sizing them up correctly you can grab these and move them wherever you need them to be to properly fit and basically do that for all of your different requirements. Uh, choose it. Click on the name to change it. Hit enter. Go down here and resize the height and width. And then it's good. Uh, and now let's go over to the completed one. Let me get that. I don't know why that's in there. And this, this is the one that I use because these are the ones that I, I typically uh have to create on kind of a daily or weekly basis. Now you'll notice I've got some images out here. That's the cool thing about artboards. All of this area out here is, you know, considered like your your work area and you can go to file place. There are other ways to do this, but this really is the easiest way. And you can let's say you can pick one and then you can drag out the size that you want it to be. Now I typically when I use this, I typically use it about this big. And then it puts it up there at the top. Now, something I didn't mention, uh, when you start bringing in these images, it's going to place it in your layer stack above what your last selected layer was. So the best thing to do when you start bringing in images, once you have your list of artboards here, is select the top one. And then when you place the next one, it will be put up here. And you'll see all my images are up here. It's just easier to find when I'm trying to work on a, a new artboard. If all my images are listed together and then all the artboards are listed together instead of all interspaced between each other because then things can get kind of kind of funky. And now let's, let's do a quick work on an artboard. Let's say I'm going to make a new Instagram po uh, portrait post and I want to put this image in there. And I drag this over there. You'll notice on my Instagram portrait, it created this little group arrow. And if I open it, it put the image in that artboard. That's why when I export it, it will be exported with it. But something else, when you do want to bring images into your artboards, the best thing to do is click on it and hit Control J. And that will create a duplicate. You'll see right here it created a duplicate. You didn't see anything because they're dead on top of each other. So you actually can't see the top one. But then when you drag it over, the original still stays there and that way you don't have to keep pulling them back out there you every time you add something to your work area you want it there to stay so you can keep using it so like i said you decide i want to use this affinity designer logo control j it made me another one and now i can pull this up there uh, you can even do you can add some a text like a title that you typically use Have that say whatever you want it to say. And then you it's there for you. You can uh, is there a reason that that's not selecting? There we go. And you can pull it around. Put it wherever you want it. 
and then you know you want to control J that to duplicate it and pull it over here and put it into your post and then you know I'm ready to I, I've finished this post I'm ready to export it go to file export IG portrait it's already set up it's gonna export all that choose your file type and hit export it's really as simple as that get your uh, artboard set up bring in some images that you tend to use a lot and you're ready to go now a couple other cool little things uh, Affinity Photo, the sister software to Affinity Designer, the, the pixel-based software, kind of like the Photoshop alternative, does not currently have an artboard ability at the time of me making this video, but they do share their file types perfectly well. This is the Affinity Designer file opened in Affinity Folder. Once you create an artboard file in Designer, you can open it in Photo and it works exactly the same. Uh, let me get my selection tool. You see when I select it, uh, my layers are not showing here. There we go. Let me go to color. And my layers all show my artboards. Now I'm going to take all these out of here like I did in the last one. And put these all outside of this group. I don't know why I ever did that. The group just gets on my nerves. It makes me select them all at one time when I want to select them. Now I can just select them as I want. Before when they were in a group I would try to select one and all of them would select and I'd have to double click it and all that so I just took them back out of the group. But anyway here are the artboards just like in the designer software and if I was to click this control J drag it over it does the same thing it creates the little group arrow open it up it put one inside of the artboard and so now you can use the artboard file on whichever one of the two softwares that you prefer and I don't have publisher affinity publisher but I'm pretty sure they open in there too I just I can't guarantee that maybe I'll maybe I'll get on the forum and ask about that so that about wraps it up uh, I hope that was helpful for you uh, Please, this is a brand new channel. Leave some comments. Give me some feedback. Uh, tell me what you like and what you don't like. Uh, besides the uh, pretty much audio quality, video quality, and lighting quality. <laughs> that I, I know suck right now because I just can't afford to do anything about it. But, you know, I'm trying. But uh, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, live to learn and learn to live.